Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Human Resource Management. This is chapter two, moving right along. Uh, as we go through chapter two, we will be discussing developing and implementing strategic HRM or human resource management plans. Uh, human resources needs to be more strategic these days. Uh, it's no longer, as we said last chapter, about uh, birthday parties, uh, mugs and hugs, as they, as they say. Uh, learning objectives for chapter two. We want to explain the differences between human resource management and personnel management. Uh, personnel management is what it used to be. Human resource management is what it, is what it typically is now. Uh, we want to define the steps in uh, human resource management strategic planning. What do you do? Uh, what skills do you need to have? What knowledge do you need to have in order to strategically plan? And we have some uh, additional supplemental videos uh, that are located in the chapter two module that will help you understand this a little bit further. So when you look at human uh, resource management versus personnel management, uh, you see some you know very distinct differences. <clears throat> in personnel management, uh, beginnings in early 1900s after strikes, right? Unions go on strikes, uh, people not working. Uh, we have to, to talk about how we make things better for the individuals who work at the company. HR department was created to improve worker relations, right? So they want to bridge the gap and be the liaison, liaison between uh, upper management and the individuals on the floor who are working, uh, want to, to bridge that gap and, and communicate between the two. Uh, other organizations realized that HR was necessary to create employee satisfaction, right? So if we want employees to be satisfied, we have to have some dealings with HR and uh, uh, learn what the employees truly want. And, and all, not, not just for the fact that uh, we want to do what's right by them, but also to retain those employees, which helps the company. <clears throat> Uh, the role of human resource management has evolved from personnel management and requires human resource strategy. So now it requires strategy, it requires you to be more strategic, uh, requires a lot more in terms of education and knowledge these days as it did in the past. Uh, so I'm going to maybe increase the size on this a bit, a little bit. Uh, I don't know, maybe not. All right. So personnel management focus and human resource management focus. So uh, for personnel management, administering of policies. So we just, here's the guidelines, here's the book. We want to administer these policies. In human resource management, helping to achieve strategic goals through people, right? So you want to be strategic and you want to achieve the actual goals that are required through the people and through the individuals, not using them up, but working with them to get the best out of them. Uh, for personnel management, you have standalone programs such as training, right? So I uh, just got to the company, go report two weeks to the training session. Uh, in human resource management, uh, training programs are integrated with companies' mission and values. So these are our, this is our mission. This is our these are our values that we want to stick by, and we want <clears throat> human resources to put together training that reflects those missions and those goals and those visions. Uh, Personnel develop or personnel department responsible for managing people. Uh, human resource management. The line managers share joint responsibility in all areas of people hiring and management. Right. So it's not just oh HR goes and interviews the people, then they say here here's Joe Schmo. He's going to be with you for the rest of your life. Uh, you are involved in that process, and you will be a primary component in the interviewing uh, of that individual. Uh, for personnel management, it creates a cost within an organization, right? It's just a cost, right? You're not really bringing uh, money or added value to the company. For human resource management, uh, <clears throat> the contribu it contributes to the profit objectives of the organization, right? So if that person in HR is online and on board with what the company wants to do, then they are able to uh, kind of relay that information, relay those feelings, relay those thoughts, and, and, and blend them into their interviewing, into their uh, recruiting, and into their hiring, uh, which makes a better fit and makes it more profitable for the company. So more on human resource management versus personnel management. Uh, strategic planning, an elaborate and systematic systematic plan of action, right? So it's elaborate, it's systematic, step-by-step, step, one, two, three, four, a plan of action in order to get the company where they need to go through the utilization of human resources, uh, which handles and manages recruiting people, selecting people, hiring people, all those functions. And most times uh, training is in that realm as well. 
The Human Resources Plan uh, addresses specifics in the HR department. So what are specifics? What do we need to address? And shorter term goals. So remember, uh, uh, you have short, you said short term goals, but those are typically called objectives. Uh, long term, then it becomes a goal. And they're tied to the Human Resource Management Strategic Plan, right? So these long term goals, short term or objectives or sprints, they're also tied to the Human Resource Management. Everything that's done needs to be in alignment with what the company's mission is what their goals are. A strategic human resource management plan is tied to the company's overall objectives, right? So the company's overall overarching objectives, that strategic human resource management plan needs to be connected to that uh, and their longer term goals. So these are the longer goals uh, typically past uh, one year. The early Urich uh, model uh, for human resource ma uh, management strategic planning consists of these things. There's a supplemental video. Uh, he's a well, uh, well-renowned uh, individual in terms of the human resource uh, uh, topic. So uh, be sure to pay close attention to his video. Uh, so you want to uh, be a strategic partner, right? So you want to be a partner with the managers. You don't want to work against them and not too much only for them. You want to be strategic in your partnership with uh, with management. Uh, you want to be a change agent. There's certain things that change that that need to occur. So a lot of times, change is uh, change is good, and uh, human resources on the forefront of ensuring that that change takes place. Uh, reiterating what needs to occur. Uh, you use like what you call a freezing model. So you take something, you unfreeze it, uh, you fix it to whatever you want it to be, and then you refreeze it to ensure that everybody's doing it the right way from going forward. Uh, being an administrative expert and functional expert, right? So you have to uh, have some technical knowledge in regards to these different systems that you're using. Uh, that, that's always great. Uh, being a human capital developer, right? So remember we talked about human capital uh, last chapter. Uh, well, you want to develop that uh, that human capital. Someone comes in and you know they say, hey, this person's got a lot of potential. Let's develop them into something bigger, better, and better. And uh, being an employee advocate, uh, human resource has to be an employee advocate. They have to be there for the employees. Employees need to feel like uh, they feel comfortable going to see them. And they shouldn't feel like um, when they go to see uh, HR that they're only on management side. It should feel like you're going in there and getting a fair shake. Uh, components of a good uh, human resource management uh, strategic plan. You want to make it applicable. It has to be applicable to your to your company. So I can't have this cookie cutter template that I take around to all the different companies and different industries and say this is what we're going to do. No, it needs to be uh, it needs to be specific uh, to the company that you're working for. Uh, be a strategic partner with the organization, right? So a strategic partner with the managers. Uh, you want to be a strategic partner with the upper manage upper management, right? You want to be a strategic partner of the organization to get the goals completed that they want completed through uh, the you know the the objectives that you set forth for the human resource department. You want to involve people. You need to involve people. Don't make the mistake of not involving people and think that you always only know best. Uh, you need to involve people. You need to uh, fact find. You need to pick their brain, figure out what they're doing. Even if it's someone from uh, you know uh, another department, uh, you see some success, figure out what they're doing, and then you implement that and, and do it. Uh, and understand how technology can be used. You need to use technology as your friend, not as your enemy, even though, especially in HR, uh, it, a lot of times things do come up with technology that can, can seem like it's your enemy, but it's not the technology, it's the individuals who are using it. Uh, so the steps uh, to strategic plan creation. So you want to conduct a strategic analysis, right? So when you say you're going to do an analysis, you want to slow down, hit the brakes, take your time, go through things step by step, and figure out What's the root cause of the problem? What's the root cause of success? Right? You want to detail these things out. We want to uh, eliminate the negative, uh, the, the problems. We want to accentuate the positive, those, those keys to success. Um, so in conducting a strategic analysis, you want to understand the company's mission and values first and foremost. You want to understand the HR department's vision, mission and values. They should be closely aligned. And understand the challenges facing uh, the department. Right, So you need to know and understand what, what challenges do we actually have. You want to prioritize issues and actions. Uh, can we do this using a SWOT analysis, right? So SWOT analysis is a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You put it in a, a square. You draw two, a, line, a vertical line and a horizontal line through the square, uh, evenly right in the middle, and you put a S W O T, right? And that's when you list out the things about your company, the things about your department, things about yourself. 
Uh, you list out the strengths, list out the weaknesses, list out the opportunities, and list out the threats. Uh, then you want to understand the organizational life cycle, and we have a slide that we're going to uh, go over on that. And the uh, organizational life cycle is, is quite interesting uh, when you look at it, when you kind of read it, you say, oh, that, that does happen, but I never really thought about it that way. And then you want to draw up the human resource management plan. So check this out. Uh, so here's the life cycle stage, the introduction. Uh, so for staffing, you want to attract the best technical and professional talent. Uh, compensation, you want to meet or exceed the labor market rates uh, to attract needed talent, right? So you want to either, I'm going to give you what everybody else is getting in the marketplace, or I'm going to give you a little bit more. Uh, training and development, you want to define future skill requirements and begin establishing uh, career ladders, right? So uh, you want to look at and say, hey, how far can this person go in reference to their potential? And then labor, uh, employment uh, relations, uh, set basic employee relations philosophy of the organization. So understand where the company is going, what their goals and values are. And then maintain labor peace, uh, I'm sorry, uh, philosophy of the organization. That's uh, for the next line, right? So that's during the introduction. Then you get to the growth phase. Now what I want you guys to do, I want you guys to go back and read all of these uh, uh, yourself, line by line, and kind of understand it. But what I do want to touch on is so you know an introduction, you'll review growth and maturity, but look at the client. So now under staffing, it says plan and implement workforce reduction and reallocation, downsizing and outplacement may occur during this stage. So during the decline, we know that, hey, you know what? We've learned to automate a few things. We've learned to do this. We've learned to do that. And now we need to learn how to uh, get rid of some of these individuals. Uh, so that's why you always, rule of thumb, is to be the individual that knows the most, knows more, uh, knows how to use technology, and you'll stay at the company for years to come. You want to implement tighter cost control um, in, in regards to compensation. So you know what? I'm not going to give you what everybody else in the market is getting uh, because we pretty much got this, this department under control. In training and development, you want to implement retaining and career consulting services, right? Uh, and then labor and employee relations, you want to improve productivity and achieve flexibility and work rules, uh, negotiate job security and employment adjustment uh, policies, right? So for instance, you say, well, what does all that mean? Uh, I had a, a scenario in which I had to lay off a, a large group of people, but then I still had to work with them for the next three months. And you say, well, you know, those people are going to sabotage documents. They're going to blow up the computers, all kind of different things. Well, no, they're not because I'm going to say, if you want the, you know, <clears throat> your your money at the end, then what you need to do is it, it sh adhere to these policies in, in terms of your performance, right? If you don't adhere to those uh, policies, then, you know, you'll be let go immediately. So that's, a, that's kind of like a, you know, slippery slope is a tricky thing for some time for some managers to do is sit there and work with someone who knows that they're going uh, to be leaving the company. <clears throat> so here's our SWOT analysis, right? Just like I said, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So strengths, hiring, talented people, company growth, uh, technology implementation for business purposes, and excellent relationship between human resource management and management executives. All great things, all strengths, good to go. Uh, weaknesses. Uh, so you have no strategic plan for human resource management, no planning for up-down cycles, no formal training programs and lacking of software needed uh, uh, to manage business processes, including go-to-market uh, staffing uh, strategies, right? So you see all these weaknesses, those are things that you need to address. So if you have strengths, you need to further build those strengths, get stronger. You have weaknesses, you need to address those and make them, they won't go directly to strengths, but they can go directly to, ah, oh, we're okay, then they can go to strengths. Then you have opportunities, uh, development of human resource management staff plan to meet uh, industry growth. Uh, you know, so things like that. These are all opportunities. I want you to read the opportunity section on your own, but opportunities for the company to grow, uh, to establish, uh, you know, more of a market share, more of a piece of the pie, to earn more money, uh, to hire more employees. Like, look at the opportunities that you have. The opportunities won't always be there. You have your small window of opportunity. Get everything done while you do have those opportunities. Uh, and then threats, obviously, uh, you know, th threats are bad things. You know, so things change, right? So sometimes it's a threat. So the economy and changing technology is going to be a threat to uh, individuals, to companies. Like, hey, you know, hey, uh, Joe Schmo company, we're going from PCs. Now we're all going to have uh, Macs instead. So uh, it's one of those things where <clears throat> uh, even though it's progress, it could still be a threat. So another long learning objective that we have is describe the steps in development of a human resource management plan, right? Very simple, right? We got blue, red, and green. Uh, the company strategic plan, this is what it is. The human resource uh, management strategic plan, 
and the HR plan. That's how it how it trickles all the way down. So what the company says, strategic human resource management plan, and then uh, HR. This is what our plan is to uh, back up and help to facilitate the human resource management plan and the uh, company strategic plan. Right? We have to you know be they have to be cheerleaders in that regard and uh, you know supporting the company and what they do. Uh, so writing that human resource management plan, six parts. Uh, it says determine human resource needs, right? So what are the needs, right? So that's the first thing. If they don't need a certain thing, then that's not what you're looking for. Uh, you want to be able to select employees, develop training, determine compensation, right? How much somebody is going to receive and appraising performance. Very, very important. You want to appraise performance. Now, one thing I always tell people, <clears throat> if you're appraising someone and you're doing the evaluation, whatever you're telling them should not come as a surprise right you should have communication uh back and forth communication between you and them throughout the entire year you shouldn't just get in there and haven't talked to them for the entire year and now you're going to talk bad about them uh you know you need to address those things as they come up <clears throat> uh in case you want to go skydiving right so uh right but writing the human resource management plan is like uh, getting everybody coordinated you know when they do a you know a jump out of the plane right uh so you see some people like right there they're in tandem because this individual uh is not someone who can jump on their own but these individuals are more qualified they're supporting to ensure that everything goes uh goes correctly <clears throat> and last learning objective is to explain the aspects needed to create a usable and successful uh, human resource management plan. Those are the key words, usable and successful. Can I use it, right? And, you know, will it be successful? Uh, <clears throat> now, obviously, we don't have a crystal ball to say they will be successful, but can it or could it be uh, successful? Uh, tips in human resource uh, management planning, link human resource management strategic plan to the company plan. If it's not linked to the company plan, there's no good. The higher ups are going to throw it out, even if it is a good plan. Uh, monitor the plan constantly, right? So you need to know and understand everything that's going on. Uh, monitor and make sure everything's uh, running smoothly. Uh, you want to measure it, right? You want to measure the impact that you're having. You want to make changes. You want to be aware of legislative uh, legislative changes, right? So uh, things change. It's your responsibility to go out there and know it and understand it. Now, some of you guys aren't in HR, aren't HR majors, and aren't in HR, uh, but uh, you have to you have to know. Even if they don't know, you have to know what the changes are. So it's always good to have you know your own type of knowledge. So that's it for chapter two. Uh, I will say in human resource management, the powerpoints are are not as long. They're typically uh, like eighteen or twenty slides. So you'll have plenty of time to study uh, your textbook, and you'll have plenty of time uh, to go in and take your quiz and do your homework assignments. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Uh, and I will respond as soon as possible. As always, have a good day and a great week.